Right now I'm standing right outside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. According to the most faithful scholarship in ancient traditions, this is where Jesus was buried in a tomb, where he hung on the cross, and where he rose from the dead. Long before Jesus was born, this area used to be a quarry. About a hundred years before Jesus lived, the builders had abandoned the quarry and it was converted to a garden. The Gospel of John even refers to this garden. The 5th century historians Sozomen and Socrates Scholasticus tell us that Christians worshipped at this location up until 135 AD, when in that same year, the Roman Emperor Hadrian built a pagan temple dedicated to the goddess Venus on this very spot. According to the 4th century writers Eusebius and Jerome, Hadrian did this to bury the memory of Jesus. In 160 AD, a man named Melito of Sardis, who was a visitor in Jerusalem, was told by the Christians living here that Jesus had been crucified and buried at this location. Now fast forward to 324 AD, when the newly converted Christian Roman Emperor Constantine sent his aged mother to the Holy Land to build churches. When she arrived, they found not only the tomb of Jesus, but also the hill on which he was crucified. The church that they built here was dedicated in 335 AD, and it stood for almost 700 years, and it was three times larger than the current church. Now this was a Christian country up until 634 AD, when the Muslims attacked the Holy Land. And for the next 465 years, this part of the world was ruled by six Muslim caliphates. The first four of these caliphates were relatively lenient toward Christians. The last two were not. And in 1009 AD, the Muslim Caliph Al-Hakim from Egypt tried to erase Christianity by destroying many churches, including this one. In 1095 AD, all of this prompted Pope Urban II to start the Crusades which was a series of wars that lasted about 150 years. During the Crusades, the construction of the second church, the one you're looking at, was completed. You can see that the right door of the church is blocked off. That happened in 1087 AD, shortly after the church was built. This staircase leads to the Chapel of the Franks, which is always closed. The Franks were a collection of tribes who became the political rulers of Western Europe and they all converted to Catholicism, and it was the Franks who built this chapel. Inside the Chapel of the Franks, there used to be a door that led directly into the church, but that door is now closed. This church is controlled by six different Christian denominations. Five of them are Orthodox religions, and one of them is Catholic. Take a look at these columns. Notice that the middle pillar has a crack at the bottom. Here's the story on that. Since the 9th century, the Greeks have celebrated a ritual called Holy Fire inside the church on each Saturday before Easter. This is where the Orthodox priest goes into the holy tomb, comes out with all of his candles lit, and the fire that he's holding is transferred from one person to the next. According to a Greek tradition, in the year 1579, the Turkish soldiers who were in charge did not allow any of the visitors to enter the church for the Holy Fire ritual. According to the legend, the Greek Patriarch of Jerusalem, Sophronius IV, was standing outside in the courtyard praying. When the sky was dark, this stone column split open and holy fire came out of this crack. Sophronius used this fire to light all of the candles in the courtyard. In 1757 and 1852, the Turkish Ottoman Empire, which controlled the Holy Land, established a rule called the status quo. When the status quo took effect, it meant that whoever controlled certain rooms inside the church would remain the custodian of that room from that moment on. Now the common areas, such as the walkways and the exterior of the building, are under joint control by the three main denominations. So that brings us to the ladder that you see leaning against the window on the second floor ledge above you. It's called the immovable ladder. It was on that ledge at the very moment that the status quo took effect. There is an engraving of the church that was done in 1728, and the ladder is visible in this engraving. No one can touch the ladder unless the three major denominations agree to move it, and they probably won't. 
It's now a symbol of the status quo, and it has stayed on this ledge for about three centuries. Right after the Islamic takeover in 637 AD, the Muslim Caliph Omar appointed the Muslim Nuseba family to open and close the doors of the church every day. Then after the Crusades, the Islamic ruler Saladin appointed the Muslim Judah family to keep the key of the church in their home. In this role, these two Muslim families have been peacekeepers between the six Christian communities inside the Holy Sepulchre Church. Since the first century, pilgrims from all over the world have come here to stand in the place that witnessed the single event that changed the destiny of humankind, when a miracle-working man from Galilee literally walked out of his own grave. <laughs>